what good am I to my staff, my customers, to this business if I'm, you know, lost every single one of my marbles? <laughs> Thanks for joining us on American Trade today. It is a special day. We're gonna be heading out to a small artisan butcher shop and meeting a lady butcher who's gonna to talk to us about how to overcome fear and how to beat failures to win in our business. Her name is Melissa Corey, and she's gonna fill us in on the details of her journey as an entrepreneur, a business owner, and a lady butcher. Let's get started. My name is Melissa Corey, and my business is Saucy Soul. Saucy son means sausage in French. So you get a free French lesson every time you come to our shop. Let me make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Say that one more time. Saucy son. Just get all, like, think of like Pepe Le Pew, right? Like, you all get right. that little saucy son. Saucy son. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you nailed it. Saying yeah, that. You nailed it. Yeah, you nailed it, man. All right. So, at Saucy Son, tell me what do you guys do here? What takes place at Saucy Oof. Son? Uh, man, that's a loaded question. Uh, we do a lot of stuff, right? So, to its core, we are a small artisan butcher shop. Uh, so we source from small family, local farms only. We build up community with our farmers and been using the same farmers since we started back in 2013. Um, and that's really cool, right? You build this connection with them. And then we were able to open our brick and mortar. So that grew our product line. We serve lunch, we do sausage making classes, butchering classes. We take it up a notch with utilizing the entire animal. So you'll find soups that we make in house because we don't want to waste anything, right? We roast those beautiful bones, we make soups, we make uh, lasagnas and uh, just to kind of like quick meals because we all we all get into that evening where you get home and you did not plan for dinner and you are like this close to eating the entire bag of potato chips mm -hmm. um, so we try to help you a little bit with that with things that would defrost quickly and you could feed yourself or your family quickly. Slavic Village uh, Melissa is one of Cleveland's great historic neighborhoods um, but it of course has faced some adversity over the years uh, with that said what made you decide on setting up shop in Slavic Village? It's super convenient, right? It's nine, 10 minutes to downtown. You can get here easily from both west and east side. And we were fortunate enough to kind of do some uh, recon over here and met some of the people, met some of the people that were working to redevelop this neighborhood. And we fell in love with it. We feel like very connected to this neighborhood and we really wanted to be a guiding light and a positive force for a neighborhood that generally gets a bad rap. And if I had to open another business tomorrow, if you gave me a million dollars and said, hey, open any business that you want, I would seek out a neighborhood like this as well. So in other words, nobody gonna be talking bad about Slavic Village. Not on my watch. Nobody's gonna no. be, I, I respect it. Not on my watch, <laughs> you know? Melissa, what inspired you to be your own boss? I spent my early part of my career working at restaurants, doing things for other folks. And I was very fortunate to work in a lot of restaurants that in, did in-house butchering. And as I came further up in my career, I realized it was harder and harder for me to do these things as an executive chef while also manning the rest of the circus, right? And I just got to a point that I was like, you know what, I've been wanting to do this, I need to do this, I'm just going to throw it in and see what happens. To be in the food industry, you have this kind of nurturing part of you in some capacity, right? You want to feed people, you want to take care of them. Um, but I didn't want to do it till midnight on a Saturday night anymore. I wanted to come in at six o'clock in the morning, do all the butchering, have the shop open for a couple hours, close the doors and go home and be home at a decent hour. Um, have a life in other words, right? Yeah, yeah a little yeah, bit of a life. Working. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, we coined the term lady butcher because we really wanted to, we wanted to show other women, not even just in the food industry, that it's possible to be something. It's possible to do anything that you want to do. How do you know I'm excited about pork belly like that? Um, discuss kind of the, the thought philosophy behind Lady Butcher um, but what does it mean to be a Lady Butcher in an area that some might perceive to be a male dominated profession I don't know if that's actual or not but I think a lot of people that's a lot of people's perception at least what it totally that? is it really is I mean um, even if you take it back just to culinary and cooking it was very male dominated right um, about the time that I started getting it in 2013 well 2003 is when I graduated culinary school, you know, you were starting to see more women chefs getting recognized. It's not that we weren't there, 
we just weren't getting the recognition, right? Like they were, they were in the back, they were making the guys look good. Um, and then somebody finally said like, hey, let's even the scales out, right? Like these women need to get the same sort of, you know, press that these men are getting. And I think you're starting to see that now in the butcher world, right? So we've always been there. If you go back into history, women have been a part of sausage making and butchering and all of that. It just wasn't something that was like really talked about. Um, so I guess natural progression of the life, here we come, you know, now we're starting to get recognition. To have someone specifically come to your business, your shop, and say, I want that and pay you, how did that, how did that make you feel as an entrepreneur, business person, lady butcher? Yeah, uh, it was wild, right? And I, of course I, I did what everyone does. I saved one of the dollars that's actually in the back. Um, and that customer still comes in today. And I think, you know, as each anniversary approaches, uh, we joke like, remember that time you were my first customer? You remember, you know, and it's, it's crazy to think how much we've done and what we've done so far and over the years. But it's also incredibly humbling to like push myself back to that and remember like I was, I was a solo person. I was working out of a shared kitchen. I had no idea what I was doing or what the direction of this company was going to be. I mean, I had two and a half months of planning and here I was. I feel like entrepreneurs were, we're a rare breed, right? Like you have to, there's no like dipping your toe in. Kind of you're like. either jumping off the cliff or you're like, oh no, I'm gonna stay here in the safety, right? And so that's what I did. I, uh, you know, I was the executive chef at Washington Place Bistro, which is, I believe, now gone. But uh, I was over on the east side, and I was, you know, I was doing good. I was getting recognition for what we were doing there, but I wasn't truly happy. Uh, so in September of 2013, I quit my job, and December of 2013, I made the first day of sales for Saucy Son. Through all the restaurants that I worked at, this was my happy space. Did you have specifically any fear stepping out and starting your own shop? You know, I think there was some fear a little bit, I, but I think it almost fueled me. And I kind of, as, as I've gotten wiser, we won't say older, <laughs> as I've gotten wiser, um, I, I've noticed a pattern for myself. Um, when I decide I want to do it, I do it. And if you're, you're in that boat with me, you better strap up because we're, we're going and we're going full speed. Um, and I think I have kind of a lower sense of fear than other folks do. And I think I also am in the mindset of, if I fail, I at least tried. So this is actually one of our most popular sausages. This is a currywurst. Um, so kind of our play on a German traditional dish. Um, and instead of having a sauce that's kind of over a sausage, we've kind of put everything into the sausage. So this has got yellow curry in there, which is a mild curry. We toast a little bit just to kind of warm up that curry. Uh, golden raisins and mustard seed. I've always just had this mentality of, I'll figure it out. And I think that that comes from being in the food industry my entire life, right? Like, cause there's so many situations that grow, get thrown at you on a daily basis. Like you just have to figure it out. There's no written playbook. There's just, you going with it and you better figure it out. And I think that was just really training to get me to here. And I feel like the fear just kind of fueled me and made me work even that much harder. And I just always said to myself, like, if you fail, you fail, but like, you got out here, you tried. Right. And like, I don't want to sit, you know, be sitting in my rocking chair at 95 and being like, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. And I just have never been that person. So I think for me, the fear, the fear just like fuels me. The idea of, of fear, at least in my opinion, um, some of it's internal where you're not sure. Like you said, there, there are things that are on the line, of course, but I think a lot of the fear also comes from how we perceive what others are going to think, whether it be our family, our friends, yeah. neighbors, whatever whatever it is. But to me, and let me know if you agree or, or, or how you do feel about it, but failure, if you fail, it's like a learning, it's a lesson. Absolutely. You, know, you come back and you know more. And I think a lot of times people see the top of that iceberg where they say, oh, that person made it. And it's like, oh, they got lucky. But really, you may have failed several times. Several times. And learned those lessons. What do you think? I absolutely do not disagree with you at all. I mean, I, I fail on the daily, right? Like, I learn something every day. And, like, I think that's the thing. It's like when you, uh, you feel like you have this safety and security of working for someone else, 
you're gonna have failures, right? But it doesn't seem as monumental because, you know, there's not as much at stake. But you learn from those. It's the same thing here, you know, in, in starting your own business. Oh my God, I fail all the time. I tell my staff, I'm like, I'm fired. You know, like I screw stuff up. I'm like, I'm fired. I'll be back tomorrow, you know. As a, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, that is one of those, it's just one of those things, the perspective that you feel. I think before getting in, sometimes one feels that way and you buy into it. But once you're in there, it's just like, you know what? I did mess up here, but hey, I learned something. Next time it's going to be different. It's going to be better next time. But I think on the other side, people just, they don't see it sometimes. It's like a thing of embarrassment or whatever the case is. But if something is going to embarrass you where you can't do it, like you said, you're going to be 95 years old if we're fortunate enough to make it to that point and thinking like, man, I should have done that. I should have done this. I should have done that. And you didn't. What advice would you give to people considering starting a new business? Don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely do it. Absolutely do it. Um, lean into your circle, right? Lean into your people. Remember that you're going to mess up. You know, uh, do not expect to be perfect. Expect to have those failures. But your community, your tribe, what, whatever word you use for those people, lean into them. Because the first three, four years that we were in business, there's no way I would have survived without them. And I still lean into them. Mm -hmm. I still have issues where staffing, I mean, right before the holidays, you know, I was super short staffed. I had my best friend learn the register and run it for me on like one of my busiest days of the year. And, you know, I was like, this is wild, but like, she's here to support me. I'm going to, I'm, she keeps asking how she can help. You know how you can help? You could come help run, run the register. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing is like, you don't have to do it all. Right? Even though you are the one who does it all, you don't have to do it all. What good am I to my staff, my customers, to this business if I'm, you know, lost every single one of my marbles? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Melissa Corey. I'm owner and head butcher of Saucy Son, and I am American Trade. If you like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. And please don't forget to share with at least six people.